Hey, Dr. Clark here, and in this preview video, we're going to be looking at section 2.3, Linear Equations. Let's get started. So we're going to try to solve linear first-order differential equations. And it turns out, uh, in the same case with separable differential equations, there's a standard way of doing it, okay? And it's called the method of integrating factors. And this will work for solving uh, essentially first order differential equations. So what I mean by that is uh, first order linear. So we need to have, we could have some function of x times the derivative in y, then a function of x times y, and then another function of x. So this is what it would be first order because there's one derivative. It's linear because uh, the y and the y prime are just by themselves. They could have functions multiplied by them, but they have to be just functions of the independent variable x or t in, uh, if it has a t, for example. Okay, so that's a linear uh, differential equation. Um, this g of x on right-hand side is sometimes called the forcing term or the driving function. Uh, in modeling, it often corresponds to some sort of external force. Uh, the left-hand side is often relating to, at least in physical systems, to some like physical laws like Newton's second law or something like that. Um, and then the g of x, that external function is you know, called the forcing term, so some external force. Um, if the g of x happens to be zero, then we call the, the linear differential equation homogeneous. If g of x isn't zero, we call it non-homogeneous. Now, when g of x is in fact zero, then you could subtract b of x, y to the other side, divide by a of x, and you would essentially have a separable differential equation. And we already learned how to solve separable differential equations, at least if they're first order. And so, in some sense, what we're really interested here is learning how to solve the non-homogeneous ones. Those are sort of the more interesting case, um, just because the other ones are already separable. All right? So, um, it turns out this so-called method of integrating factors has a oh, standard four-step way of solving it. It looks like a complete mess, right? And so what we're not going to do is follow this formula to solve these things, okay? Because if you look at it, it just looks like nonsense, okay? What we need to do is actually understand this method sort of from the inside out. And in order to do that, we're going to simply think about the product rule. And it turns out that the product rule is the key to understanding the method of integrating factors. Not that mess, not, I mean, this mess, this doesn't really help us, right? Like this is technically a formula for doing it. And we will do some of these steps, but it's not really what we're gonna do. What we're going to do is understand the product rule. And the product rule is simple. It just says if you have the product of functions and you take the derivative, the derivative of fg is f prime g plus fg prime. And we're gonna do it backwards. So if you have something that looks like this and you integrated it, well, you would just get fg, right? Because the integral of fg prime is just fg. And so the integral of the right-hand side must be fg. Um, so what would be the antiderivative of, of, say, 3x squared sine of x plus x cubed cosine of x? Well, if we recognize that this thing is, well, 3x squared, that's the derivative of x cubed. So this is like f and f prime. And cosine is the derivative of sine, so this is like g and g prime. So the antiderivative of f prime g plus f g prime should just be f g, right? Which would be x cubed sine of x. So that is the antiderivative of this sum right here, right? Look at it. What's the derivative of x cubed sine of x? Would be 3x squared sine plus x cubed cosine. Here's another slightly more complicated example. Um, here is, well, here we got f and f prime. That could be anything. What's this g? Well, e to the x squared, what's the derivative of that? Well, it'd be 2x e to the x squared. So this is sort of like g prime f plus g f prime. Well, the antiderivative would be f times g. Well, f is f and g is e to the x squared. So it would be e to the x squared f of x. All right. So if we can understand the product rule and then look for things that look like product rules, and it will turn out when we solve linear differential equations, there's going to be things that show up that look like product rules, then the antiderivatives will be easy because it'll just be f times g, 
right? So if we can understand, if we can find the F prime and the G, and the F and the G prime, and we integrate it as a package, we'll just get F G. And that's what we're going to do. And that will actually, so the understanding is going to mean that we don't have to really memorize this nonsense. And instead, we can just, re, uh, we can live by understanding the product rule. All right. So that's, that's the big idea going in, is have your mind set on the product rule, and when we get to class, we will talk about how that actually, how the product rule will actually help us solve these linear first order uh, differential equations, even if they're non-homogeneous, okay? So we'll see you in class, and have a good day.